really love Jesus. Amen. How many love Jesus for real? Amen. Oh, that song, I only heard Lisa. How many of y'all love Jesus for real? Amen. Hallelujah. Simple song that says, For you deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, I lift my hands in worship as I bless your holy name, for you deserve the glory. Come on, sing it, church. You deserve the glory.
our God is awesome. Come on, lift up a praise unto him. He is a worthy God. He's an awesome God. Father, we bless you today. Father, we glorify you today, God. We give you all the honor, all the glory, Lord. We exalt you above all other gods. We thank you today, God, that you will have your way like never before, God. Move by your spirit. Move by your power, Lord. Father, let your fire, let your anointing fall, God. Father, we can find every power that is not like you, God. Thank you, Lord, God, that your presence is here for where your spirit is. There is liberty, God. Thank you for liberty in this place today. We give you praise, God. Hallelujah. And be on
So this morning I want to talk about, he talked about the three spirits that really, really come against the church. Because let me tell you, Satan do not like the fact that we are believers. He do not like the fact that we are, are here. He does not like the fact that we are serving and worshiping the Most High God. He hates the fact that you got up this morning and came to church. He hates the fact that you came to church this morning. Are you hearing me on today? Because he will try everything in his power to keep us from coming to the house of the Lord. Amen? Amen. But this morning, we want I want to talk today, and I just want to talk and really like to teach because teaching is where you're going to get an understanding. Amen? And so this morning, we talk about, he told me about the three spirits. Talk about the spirit of Absalom, the spirit of Ahithophel, and the spirit of Amnon. And those are the spirits that you could sometimes be the, the, the victim or you could be the villain. Amen? So I don't want you to hear me today as if, you know, you're just thinking about everybody else and saying, hmm, that's not like one of my friends. This is time for us to take a look at ourselves and see, hey, let me make sure that there's nothing being said today that is hindering me from getting to the next place in God. You know, we see visions and dreams. We've seen great things. We know that, how many know that you call great, but yet still greatness, you only smell it, you see it, but it seems like it'll be so far away from you. And it's not because God is not going to do it and God is not um, in the business of doing it. Sometimes we can be our own worst enemies. Is that not true? Sometimes we can take a gun and shoot our own self, shoot ourselves right in our own feet, right? And so there are some times that God would have to alert us and to let us know some things that we are dealing with so we can become better in him. So today we're going to talk about the spirit of who? Absalom. The spirit of who? Absalom. Everybody know who Absalom was? Anybody know who Absalom was? Absalom was David's third son. Okay? That's who Absalom was. He was David. And we know David was what? He was what? The first, second, or third king of Israel. He was the second king, right? The one that God chose after his own heart. You all need to go to Bible. What happened? Okay, so he was the second king of Israel. He was the second king of Israel after Saul. We know what happened with Saul, right? Uh, what happened with Amnon? Amnon um, Absalom, sorry. Absalom was David's third son. David had a lot of wives, right? A lot of women, a lot of you know. Sometimes some 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 guys they have a lot of baby mamas and they have a lot of baby mama drama. Please don't have a lot of baby mama drama. And so they have a lot of baby mama drama. There. So David had a lot of uh, wives, and so each of these wives had different children. And these children um, were all princesses and princess, of course. So now, what happened was Amnon had went in and raped David's daughter. And Amnon, David didn't really do anything about it. So Absalom got really angry about that, and he killed his brother. And he held that against his father. Are you all hear me on today? Sometimes we can hold some things that are really keeping us back. Some things against a thing. Sometimes, uh, listen, I'm going to lie. So I'm trying to be pro professional. Y'all help me to be professional, please, okay? So sometimes we can hold some things in our heart that can really hold us back from moving to the next level. Do you believe that today? Mm -hmm. Sometimes we can have some things and situations and people in our heart that can really hold us from getting to the next place. Look at your neighbor say, I, I cannot afford to allow anyone to live rent-free in my heart. We have to let everything and anybody go, okay? I cannot afford to let anyone or anything live rent free in my heart because I must get to that place where God wants me to be, right? If Moses was so close to God, Moses was close, that was God. I mean, they had a good relationship. And Moses missed the promised line. And that day, he, man, listen here, he, he was the one who got the, he received the, the Ten Commandments. He was the one who received the promise from God. And he was the one who received all this information. He led the children out of captivity. And he missed the promised land. So that means we got to be very careful that we don't carry around things on our heart. So Absalom, instead of Absalom really talking about it, Absalom held this thing in his heart. Are you hearing me on today? And sometimes, even as children... We got to be careful as parents because sometimes the kids will watch, you know, they'll watch. I have a child that will watch what you do to see if you're going to reprimand the child, that's the child the way they were reprimanded. Amen. So those who have one kid, pray, one child, praise be the Lord. But when you have more than one kid, that child will look to see how you reprimand the other child and say, but how come when I did that? And sometimes they won't say anything. They will just keep it in their heart. And all of a sudden you're trying to figure out why they're acting out or why they're doing what they're doing because they felt that, okay, I went out, I stuck out at night and you stuck out at night 
Now, mommy almost tear me apart, but just spoke to you. That's, I got a problem with that. And so they will keep those things in their heart, and the devil will keep on highlighting and letting them see that you're doing this for this child and doing that for the next child. And not even aware of what you're doing. And all of a sudden, you have an absolute spirit that enters your child. Are you hear me on today? And there's a lot of that that is going on, not only in our children, but even on our job. Wherever it is, we got to be very careful for the a spirit of Absalom. Okay? Let's look at 2 Samuel, 2 Samuel, the 15th chapter, and um, I'm going to read that, I'm going to read about um, Absalom, and it says, and it came to pass after this, that Absalom prepared him chariots and horses, and 50 men to run before him, and Absalom rose early and stood beside the way of the gate. And it was so when any man that had a controversy came to the king for judgment, then Absalom called unto him and said, Of what city are you? And he said, The servant, thy servant is one of the tribes of Israel. And Absalom said unto him, See, thy matters are good and right, but there is no man deputed of the king to hear thee. Absalom, moreover, Oh, that I were made a judge in the land, that every man which had any suit or cause might come unto me, and I would do justice. Now, don't we see this quite often in our workplaces, where people are trying to be the boss, and they just an employee like you? Have you ever experienced that? They're trying to tell everybody else what to do, and they are they just they are getting the same pay as you, but they're trying to be the boss. And we see that in the church, where people are trying to be more than what they are. And you have to understand, our job is to work to hell well done. Anybody want to hear well done, like good and faithful servant? Yeah. You don't want to get to the gate and then hear, and I'm talking about you got to go, you depart from me, I know you not. You want to hear a well done, thou good and faithful servant. And so it says, the spirit of this spirit is fueled by human, what wisdom? Wisdom. Human wisdom. human wisdom. This spirit is fueled by human wisdom, complaint, gossip, and a desire to prove what is right, and to use of information to force a change in the church. In the church, the the complaint are often what accurate. Yet they are driven by the spirit of truth. They aren't driven by a spirit of truth. They are empowered by a what? Demonic. A demonic spirit. So this spirit. What it does, it sits there disgruntled because they, you know, a lot of times people feel like they can do it and they can do it better than you. If you bring your macaroni to church, somebody is like, well, I can bake macaroni. They'll ask, who baked that? You know, the taste of macaroni. Well, I can bake macaroni better than that, you know. But they didn't ask me to bake it. Everyone have been eating it. One have been another thing left. You know what I mean? If you're going to bake it, then just offer the bacon. We should have to be behind you, right? Oh, I can cook the chicken better than that, right? Right, so I mean? I cook the chicken better than that. Uh. <laughs> You know, if I had cooked that chicken, you know, it would have been so and so. And these are how these little small things, they sound really funny, but this is how the spirit of Absalom enter, and this is how we get to the place of where we are disgruntled. Or if you know, let me, let me put it like this. Okay, you have an employee, right? Let me use a, a fast food. You're, you, um, <clears throat> both of you are started the same time. You are hard workers, but yet this employee, you know, stealing sandwich, right? They're eating <laughs> But I was working the way they used to take the whole sandwich and put it in our chest and go in the bathroom and just munch down on that man. I'm telling you, when you're hungry, oh, just take them. Now, when, since they got nuggets, you just pop a nugget in your mouth. That's stealing, huh? Yes, or pop fries, you know, when the manager in there or whatever. So now you notice that this person is stealing, okay? This person is stealing, but you're not stealing. You're both working now. They elevate that person. How would you feel? Now you would feel upset because but you don't because the boss don't know that this person is a thief. But you know, and so in your heart you'll be upset, disgruntled, start, you know, I remember I tell you the story I went to this cashier who was really upset with the people they didn't give her pay. So she um she gave me a hundred word of groceries for ten dollars. She just start throwing everything and wow. start throwing everything and they can pay my money, they can pay me the that's what I say. <laughs> So, you know, I was like, well, praise be to God. Okay, that ain't, that ain't up Listen, listen, I wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't fully there yet. I wasn't fully there yet. I would have had a, if I was where well, I'm now, I would have probably had a conversation with her and tell her, well, you know, don't do that. Or she's still doing this. Nothing I can do. You know what I mean? But, but all seriousness. So, so it says, whenever people attempt to satisfy legitimate needs via manipulation, that is what? Witchcraft. Whenever people try to manipulate you, that is what? Witchcraft. Absalom is drunk on the spirit of witchcraft. How do we manipulate people? 
we try to manipulate people into doing things that you know we want them to do. We would come and 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 you know some of us are natural born manipulators. Like you even look at the children when they want you to pick them up, they'll cry and no water come out of their eye and you feel so sorry and you what you do you pick them up. Now you can't set that child down because you've already manipulated you as young as they are. As young as they are, they know how to do. They know how to manipulate you. Even the kids, they would wait until they get in the store in the front of everyone and throw themselves on the ground and start kicking and hollering. Now they know if they were home, you would tear them up. But they, for some reason, they wait until they get in a public place and then they start acting up because we tell them no, they can't have that bag of chip or that candy. And you don't look at them. You wait till you get them. You know, you understand what I'm saying? So understand, understand. Manipulation is where people will try to, they will do witchcraft. What they do is say, but anyway, well, anyway, Sister Yvette, I don't know but you, child. Well, I don't think I can do, I don't think I can sing on that praise thing. I know but you, but you know, um, you know, the Lord showed me something about that. And I, I don't think I can do that. I don't know if you're going to do that. You try to manipulate that person from doing what they know is right. You have to be careful. There are a lot of people. And we're going to talk about the spread of Hithophel. There are a lot of people that we're taking counsel from that mean us no good. But we're taking counsel. Mm -hmm. Understand, people will see a star. So what they'll do is tell you things to destroy you so that they can get up on top. Amen? Yeah. They want to climb up on you. And they will tell you things to send you the wrong way. You know that sometimes their stories have been told that people, when they went to these different countries, what happened? The people they'll ask for directions and they'll direct them to the dead and then rob them. So you gotta be careful of who you take in counsel from. Amen? Amen. Amen. So let's go to the first spirit that we don't do. Let's look at the picture. This is what this is the first one of the first spirit that the spirit deals with. The spirit of Absalom is a spirit, is a gossiper. They love to what? Gossip. gossip. And gossip is not talking about um Simone and then telling some then saying, um, will you let's pray for her. Don't even try that. Don't even try to cover that with no cake, no ice and dough, but you can pray for them. Gossiping is something that if you're talking about somebody behind their back that they know that you know that they will not approve of. And you know they'll not approve of that. So if I'm talking about, if I'm saying something behind your back that I know you'll disapprove of, you're gossiping about me, right? So if you're telling me, girl, you see that daughter? Oh my God, child, I don't know what's going on in that house. All our children. And I told them, we need to pray. No, nah. You, what you did was gossip. And everyone, and I, I find sometimes I get myself involved in gossip. We have to be very careful. See, because I've learned that God loves his people. So he loves us all so equal that even though they are enemies, he still will turn on us and be gloat in them. He is, so, he is so awesome. His ways are not like our ways. No, it's just not like our thoughts. So we have to be so careful. Because even though you be the victim... If you turn and do something wrong, you can become the villain so easily. Right? So let's look at the definition. Let's look at the gossip, how, how it can. How can you know if you're under the influence of the Absalom demon? Absalom what? Demon. Here are some indicators. Because let me tell you something. Absalom is like the male spirit or the male version of, of Jezebel, you know. It's the same spirit. Jezebel is the male version of Jezebel. And we know the Jezebel spirit is very seductive, very, the Jezebel does more, the woman, uh, the woman, but it's not a woman. A Jezebel could be a man or a woman. Absalom could be a man or a woman. Are you understanding me? So it says, here are some of the indicators. Gossip. This should be the easiest indicator. Yet even the most seasoned Christians fall victim to the spirit of gossip all the time. How many of you fall victim to the spirit of gossip? I find myself falling victim to the spirit of gossip all the time. But that's okay, bounce back and say, all right, I'm bouncing back. Let's stop that, all right? And so it says, I discovered that very few really understand what gossip really is. Here's my favorite de definition, like I just said. Gossip is any discussion about a person or entity, such as a church, group, or business, that the person or leader of that entity would what? Disapprove of. So if you know that there's something that's going to hurt somebody, then you shouldn't talk about it. Mm -hmm. If somebody comes to you in confidence and tells you something, you should not go and spread it all over the place, right? Mm -hmm. Because you won't want nobody to spread it all over the place for you, right? Yes. How would you like if God was to show the worst moment of your life, five minutes, and he said, I'm going to show five minutes everybody their, their secrets. How would you like it? Who, who would like that? Who would like God to do that for them? Show five minutes of your life. I thought so. And so we, all of us have problems. We all have situations. Because if God showed five minutes of our lives and what we were doing, we probably would faint or die from heart attack. Amen? Amen? 
So we all got what? Situations, right? And so we have to be careful that we are not gossiping about each other. We have to be careful that we are not talking about one another. It's very easy to get into it because if you're around people who talk a lot and who talk and talk a lot, you're going to easily get yourself right caught up. That's why when you see people who talk a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, what you need to do is say, make your conversation really brief and move on. Because if you stand up there or you listen on the phone long, they will find things. And before you know, the conversation starts beautiful. And then before you know, you end up getting into, you're finding yourself getting into something deep. Then all of a sudden, you you hear your name, you and the you say and I say. Wow. I hate you says and I say. You and the you say. No, but you say that. No, he say that. She say that. And it say that. And then what you get? You get a controversy. Now you get people upset with one another all because we don't know how to keep. Now let me tell you something. It's not easy because the tongue is a fiery. The tongue is evil, James say. The tongue is unruly. The tongue of the chain. This tongue only can be tamed by the Holy Spirit. Because this tongue, sometimes you, want, you don't want to say stuff, but you find yourself saying stuff. You know what I'm talking about? You try your best to hold it back, but it does come blurt now. And you can't take it back. This tongue is off the chain. The tongue is unruly. Unfortunately, the tongue don't get saved. You have to allow the Holy Spirit to regenerate and put the right things in your spirit to say. You all understand I me? Mean? That's why James said us to be slow to speak but quick to listen. So listen. Hear what the person is saying first. Listen to understand. Don't listen to respond. You know, sometimes you'll answer my, hmm But you're not hearing what that person is. Are you ready for to come back with your shots? Instead of listening and, say, and hearing what they're saying to you and saying, okay. Okay, I understand. Because sometimes you can fire back, fire the wrong words, and then later down, you catch it. And sometimes it's too late. Because we already say it and, and do the wrong things. Amen? Amen? So if somebody got us involved in gossip, it isn't because... It isn't because if they call... But I, was, I didn't say anything. You didn't say anything. If you didn't do anything, they can't hold you responsible. Right, right around. <laughs> Are you, um, uh, you all understand what I'm saying? So you have to be very careful. I'm telling you, this is a spirit that truly destroys churches. Not only churches, homes, not only homes. This is a spirit that not only destroys churches and the homes, but it, it destroys families. It destroys relationships. It destroys good friends. You know, you have a BFF and that person don't like the relationship you have and they would come in and try to destroy it. Girl, you know, she talking about you. Girl, she don't like you behind your back. She be talking. You have to be very careful. This spirit here will cause people, will cause you to fall out with people who really love you, people who really care about you. And because you don't know, you will fall over that person. Are you hand me on today? I hope you're listening. So if you all have gossiping, you better start to repent and say, Lord, deliver me from this gossiping spirit in the name of Jesus. Help me not to gossip. <laughs> Help me not to be a gossiper. Deliver me from that gossiping spirit. Amen? Because if somebody was to talk something on you, some of y'all would be hot like a six of them come up here with a Glock 9, right? So you have to understand. That's the same way people feel. Nobody likes when people talk about them and say things about them, right? So we have to be careful. Amen? Amen? Now, I'm the type of person I like to tell you, and I mean, they said that's bad too, so I don't know what to do in that situation. Do I tell or not say? Well, I can't, but I'm going to tell, you know, because I knew there was somebody, I, if, you know, if I don't like your food, I can tell you. You know, there was somebody who went, Charlie Cook wanted some chicken for me sometime, a long time ago. That was about 10, 15 years ago, 16 years ago. And when I saw the way they cooked that chicken, auntie, I never eat chicken from them no more. <laughs> They just got delivered, I think, about a year or two ago. I stopped eating chicken from them. And, you know, even though I was eating it, I was like, I had to pray and go into deep fasting and praying. Amen? And so we need to understand. <laughs> they know I love them. So we have to understand that this spirit of Absalom, seriously, is a gossiping spirit. It's a spirit. This is the first indicator. It loves to gossip. So it loves to talk about everybody else. Look at this one. Look at that one. Look at what pastors say. Look at that. And most of the gossiping is always about leadership or it's always about other people who are doing in the forefront. You all hear me what I'm saying? So they sit in the back. So be careful. Guard your ears, people, and guard your heart. Right? Let's keep it going. So this here, this is what the spirit of Absalom does. Absalom... What Absalom, the Bible say Absalom had 50, sent 50. You know, 50 is the number of Pentecost. You know, 50, he sent 50 men ahead of him. And those men were there. And so what Absalom did is when people came in to the king, he asked them, hey, where you from? Where you from? You from Jamaica? Oh, okay, you going to that prison? Um, 
Okay, but let me tell you something. I don't know if you can get any results from them. I'm telling tell you right now. I don't know what's going to happen, but I don't think you could go there. But if I was in charge, you would have this and you would have that. If I was doing it, if I was the pastor, you might listen. Yeah, this church would be run a different way. You understand what I'm saying? Because let me tell you. But anyway, you know, I'm not saying you go ahead, you go ahead, you do what you got to do. But I'm telling you, if I was in charge, it wouldn't be like this. You know, you know what I'm saying? How many times we think in our mind, if I was the president, you think the country's so easy to run like that? Eh? The president is very, very hard. It's a very stressful job. They probably hardly get any sleep at night. Are y'all understanding me? And so this is what Amnon, Absalom, what Absalom did, Absalom was in the midst there, and Absalom was just sweeting. What he was doing was winning the hearts of the people. And this is what people do. When they're in leadership, and we have to be so careful who we have in leadership with us. We have to be so careful who working with us. We have to be so careful who co-laboring with us. You understand what I'm saying? Because you could think you have somebody so good. I've heard of so many horror stories. I've heard a horror story. I think uh, my spiritual mother, Dr. Stella, she was telling us about how she had this clinic. She's a doctor. She's a, a physician. Um, you know, that's what she did. She studied um, um, doc, she studied physician. She studied, she was a, what you call a pediatrician. So that's what she studied. Okay, now here it is. Because she's doing the work of God, she had a clinic open up. She had a doctor running it, running really well for years, doing really good. Getting a lot of people. You know, while she's doing the work of the Lord, one day this doctor up and rose, left the clinic and took all the workers with her, with them. Leave her right there. So she had to hurry up, run, and, and took control of her clinic. Took all of her clients. That's the spirit of Absalom. That's what people do. That's why it's so important. That's why anytime people first come to Christ, I like to be the first person in their air. Because you have these Absalom spirit. <laughs> when they see new people, how you doing? <laughs> Oh, what of God are you doing? I, well, I, you know, I'm Sharice. You know, I, I, I go here. Yeah, I've been here a long time. So how you got here? Yeah, somebody told me. Okay, I, I saw it on Facebook. Oh, okay. Yeah, I've been here a long time, child. Let me let you know. Let me let you know. You know, I'm gonna tell you a little information about this church. Let me know how it go. You know, da 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 da. da. And by the time that poor person, they can't even get their mind together or receive anything because you've already, you've already come and stand in the way of sinners. Are you all hearing me on today? That's what the Absalom spirit do. That's the spirit. Oh, she's so rough. You don't think she's tough? She rough, man. Jesus come with Jesus said, I didn't come to give Jesus come with the spirit with the sword. He came with the sword. He said, I come with the sword. Because he come, what he come to do? He come to let the world know. He come to let the enemy know that hey, I'm coming to take back. When the when the people were in the temple with the money, Jesus, Jesus didn't go there and talk about them. Can you please excuse me? You don't know y'all shouldn't be doing this. There's sometimes Jesus got radical. Jesus turned over the table and got really radical and tell them, listen here, you come and make my father's house a house of thieves. And this is supposed to be a house of prayer. And so there are times and situations that you have to be radical. And so this is what Absalom did. Absalom waits for those moments. And this is what Absalom do. Absalom looked for people who are disgruntled. People who have a problem with the leadership. And that's who Absalom looked for. They would pick out those people because you know why? They would hear what you're saying or they will watch you. You don't have to come to church. So, oh, well, Sister Jennifer, um, I'm worried about you. How are you doing? You know? Um, what, what's going on with you? You know? Oh, no, I'm working. Oh, because I was wondering, you know, because I noticed that, you know, people are coming, but a lot of people are going. So I was just wondering if you saw what was happening. This is the spirit of Absalom. <laughs> this is the spirit of Absalom. Believe me, I've seen people do it even, even right here. Recently, people are doing it. Oh, how's that person? I'm really worried about that person. I've been reaching out to that person, wondering if they're okay. I, I said to them, I said, um, you're not the pastor. I don't understand why you're so interested in how everybody's doing or what's going on with everybody. That's not your concern. Your concern is to come to be a part of what's going on here. And if God decides to elevate you, that's what he would do in his own time. Amen? So we have people who come. And Absalom Spirit is an Absalom Spirit. is an intellectual. They are intellectual. They're smart. You know, they have a lot of gifts. They have a lot of talents. And that's a beautiful thing. And if you don't know, if that is not under control, and if that's not in the place where God wanted to be, it can get out of control and you could become a thorn in other people's side instead of a blessing. Look at your neighbor and say, I don't want to be a thorn, but I want to be a blessing. Or well, say it again. Say, I don't want to be a thorn. I want to be a blessing. Right versus wrong. Are you living in the tree of knowledge, good and evil, by attempting to prove yourself and your leaders wrong? 
Or are you living in a tree of life that results in honoring and serving them? And this is where we have a lot of problem in the church. Because people don't honor and serve. We don't respect nobody no more. We have a little bit of anointing, that's it. Somebody then prophesied and tell you that you are the master prophet, that's it. Or you are the master evangelist, or you are going to be an archbishop, or you're going to be an, an apostle to the nation, that's it. Nobody else could tell you nothing. Now, you ain't trying to, yeah, they telling you this, you hear. But your step is all the way down to P. But you didn't rent to pee and miss all those steps. And, and we are trying to figure out why it's not working. And this is what Satan is doing. Satan is really causing a lot of people to go further or go faster than God wants them to go. It is vitally important that we learn. Amen? Just like how you went to school. You went to school and you learn. You got your degree, right? You have to learn. You have to go through. You have to pass some tests, right, Yolanda? Those of you in school, then you have to learn. You have to pass some tests, right? Then they just call you and say, hey, I have a theology degree for you. You have to learn, you have to go to school. Now, I've had that happen to me. I've had somebody, I don't know this man, he came to me. Oh, my, 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 she, my, my, my. And he said to me, he said, um, the Lord tell me, he said, I'm, I'm ordaining so and so. And the Lord tell me to give you a doctor of divinity degree. He says, a matter of fact, a double doctor of divinity degree. I said, that's okay. I said, that's okay, thank you. <laughs> I didn't work for that. I don't know if you even know doctor degree. Come on, thank you. I appreciate that. You understand? So people can put you there before time. Uh -huh. You gotta go up the rankings, and that's the problem. We 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 want to be empowered. We want to be. We want to get to the place where we want to get up. People call me doctor all the time. You think I'm paying attention to that? I still have to do the work, and to get to the place the way I need to get. That's where we fall short because someone call you, and that's if you notice on American Idol, somebody can tell that person they can sing for real, for real. <laughs> Somebody tell them that they sound like they sound like Whitney. Somebody already tell them they sound like whoever, um, um, whoever these. Somebody to tell them that they sound like Kirk. I'm telling you, somebody to lie to them and tell them that. And guess what? They go there. And let me tell you, I'd be right there to be laughing. Oh my God! Trust me, I I I get right in. Because let me tell you something. If you fool to listen and believe that you want to sing without, you know, if you really want to be, you really you got to take voice lessons, right? You gotta go to take voice lessons, you gotta enhance who you are. If you go on your gift and talent, you are not gonna get very far. You have to be enhanced. Just like a, scan, a child needs to go to school. You can look at a child and see they're talented and, and they could be holding their little mic and, and look like they're a preacher. But if they do not go through those steps, you are gonna have a child or a person that is forced right or a person that goes into ministry and they're not really prepared because there are a lot of steps missing, missing learning gaps that is missing that they need and didn't have. And this is what's happening. And it's not that God did not call you for these things. You were not fully prepared for it. You didn't wait for preparation. You just heard a word, but you didn't allow yourself to sit at anybody's feet. We don't sit at nobody's feet no more. John, I said nobody's feet. Told John, I sit at nobody's feet. <laughs> We don't want to sit at nobody's feet no more because you know what? We, 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 we sometimes what we do is we look at people and we judge them from the cover and not looking at what's inside the book. You have to look, open the book first and start to read before you judge this book is boring. How do you know the book is boring? How do you know the book is boring and you have not even opened the cover? Hello? So you have to understand, tell your neighbors, they don't underestimate what the anointing inside of me. Don't underestimate the anointing inside of me. Don't underestimate it. It's anointed. You are anointed. You are anointed to do what is needed to be done. But the thing about it is, is everyone has to go through those steps. This is what is messing up the church. This is what's messing up the world. Because people want to be promoted. They want to be promoted to a CEO position and don't have no CEO anointed. Okay? They want to be promoted. People who want to run business and don't have no gain, get no knowledge, don't even educate themselves. In order for you to, you could do it. Don't get me wrong. But you have to educate yourself. You have to get to the training that is needed. If you understand, people don't go in the army and fight and they're not ready to fight. This ain't no street fight when you go out there in the army. You could street fight. But it's a different type of fight when you go there to fight the, 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 the when you go there to fight the enemy, right? You have to strategize because you have to know how the Chinese fight, you have to know how the the the, the Russians fight. You got to know how each of those army operate. You educate yourself. If you don't know, then you are uh, you are, they have the upper hand on you. You cannot allow the enemy to have an upper hand on you. Are you letting me on today? So when people come to you and start to talk about your leaders, you don't sit there and talk about um apostle like. Um, this has been bothering me for a long time. I really wanted to tell you. But, you know, um, I give so-and-so a ride home every day. And every day they have something to say about you or your family or someone in the church. 
then why are you giving them a ride every day? You like it. Yeah. <laughs> you like that information. Mm -hmm. Because if I give you a ride one day, you're talking about my lead who helped me cover. Um, excuse me, I'm going to let the leader know because we need to talk about this. This is off the chain, this is wrong. And I'm going to let them know. I just want you to know that I'm going to tell them how you feel because I don't want to be a part of this mess that you're trying to start right here. Mm -hmm. And this is how people get messed up. This is how we lose our blessing. This is how we lose our way. This is how we don't get the full blessing. We get this little small blessing when God is trying to give us something great because he tells us what we need to do and we allow the spirit of Absalom to come and tell us the wrong thing. The spirit of Absalom is always against the leaders. Jezebel is after the prophets. Absalom is after the leaders. All. Anybody who have a leading position. Okay. So they look for the leadership team. Look, and you could tell the weak, you could tell the weakest link, right? Okay. You can, right? You can always tell the weakest link. That's right, Auntie. I don't blame you. You could tell the weakest link. You could always tell, and that's why, that's how people, that's how the enemy gets in, because he looks for the weakest link. Now, let me tell you something. Now, let me tell you, I might be joking, but I might joke a lot with Sister Vivian, but let me tell you something about her. If I'm going into a territory that is new and that needs to fight, I'm taking Vivian. <laughs> if I'm going to a place that needs to be teared out and hell needs, dog needs to be kicked down, I'm taking Vivian. Because she got that anointing for that. Are y'all hearing me on today? You have to know who got what. I had to take us y'all, if I look behind, some of y'all will be like, um, of course I know. <laughs> but we're going to be ahead of me, Pussle, let's go, Pussle, Pussle, come on, let's go. Because that's what the anointing that is on her life. Y'all need to understand this. And so we have to understand, we have to, because I put in a lot of boot camps. She's been in plenty boot camps. <laughs> there were nights that her and Jennifer, them, they stand the whole night and pray. And they could not sit down. They had some serious boot camp. <laughs> They were nice that they had to pray for a full hour. And I said, no praise the Lord. No, thank you, Jesus. I want full prayer. Full hour. That's how I used to train them. Full hour. They had to pray. And I ain't talking about no prayer, no foolishness. They had to pray. Because you have to be prepared for the body. You got to know what to say. Are you all letting me on today? And if you are prepared, and people think, oh, no, you don't just get up and pray. You have to, you have to learn the principles. Why we pray? Who we praying for? We have to learn these things. I mean, your gift is beautiful, but it needs to be cultivated. Tell someone your gift needs to be cultivated. If you don't stand for something, you will fall for every day. And if you don't have a firm foundation and understand the importance, understand, when, you, when, your, leader, when, you, when your leader is there, let me tell you, they shared you, and they take the dots, what you're supposed to receive. That's what covering does. Mm -hmm. Covering gets up in the night and pray and cover you from an enemy and a harm that you don't even know that they're doing. Mm -hmm. Hello, somebody? Amen. Covering, believe God and say, God, please help them find a job. God, please work the situation out. That's proper covering. Mm -hmm. Hello? Mm -hmm. Because God, Jesus said, I will give them pastors after what? My own heart. And when you have the heart of God and God loves people and he cares for his people, what he does? He makes sure and take care of them, right? Yes. The Bible says you want your son would ask you for a, a, a bread and you give him a stone. Anybody give their children a stone if they ask for bread? No. If your child asks you for a chip, even though you know it's bad, but you still don't give it to them. Candy. Cupcake. You still don't give it to them, right? I need directions too. Okay, let's go to the next picture. This is what we're talking about. This is what the spirit of Absalom does. The spirit of Ab Absalom is contrary to the vision of the house. So it pulls against what the house is trying to do. The spirit of Absalom, let's, let's read that definition. And if you shift it in your seat, don't blame me. It's about the Holy Spirit. Because when my apostle told me this message, I had this from, I think that was about a month or so ago. He came and talked to me. And that was about a month or so ago. And that hit me. I said, okay, start preparing for this, for this. So contrary vision, it says you and others in the church might see the need for something such as a what? A soup kitchen, right? Um, um, pick it. Small group ministry or evangelism emphasis. While this may be a valid need, you have to ask the question, does it agree with the specific vision of my church? Mm -hmm. All churches are assigned to have soup kitchens, right? For example, it is important to come under the vision of the what? The house. Come under the vision of the what? House. And learn other focuses on your shelf until God enables you to do it. Run, Run with it. it. 
I've had many people come in this ministry and try to tell me what to do, how to do it, when to do it, why to do it. I shouldn't do the tent like that. I shouldn't do the women's ministry like that. I shouldn't do this like that. We've had people come and tell us how to do the praise theme, songs we should sing, how we should sing it, when we should sing it. We've had, so what these are, these are Absalom spirit. Because when, anytime you come in a ministry, you come to be a part of what's going on. Your vision will go with what's there. Yeah. You will have the same desire for what the pastor has. Mm -hmm. You can't come in here talking about, I want to run this and I want to do that and do the next. Right. That's an Absalom spirit. Mm -hmm. I've had people say, I want to do, I, can I do a service? I want to do a service. Okay. I want to have a service. <laughs> I want to have a worship service. I want to have this service. I want to have that service. That don't tie with the vision. We have a yearly calendar. So if something we do, it should fit in what we're doing. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Amen. And that's what it is. So you can't come in now. You come and say, hey, I want to do a singspiration. Where we just, you know, with the children talent. That's, that ties into the vision. Mm -hmm. Right? If you be up in the women's club, be up in the women's quarterly, and you say, hey, um, Yvette, I feel there's something that will really empower the women's quarterly. That's a good thing. Hello? But now you out there, you will start your own prayer meeting. That's a division. Well, y'all can come to my house. You know, so Jennifer, calling all the people, telling them, y'all um, coming this morning? Y'all going to come to the house? I'm going to do prayer meeting today. Okay? Come, everybody. Okay, they go to your house. You give them a word. And you go, they, they go, and they go, and they go. That's what, that's what the spirit of Absalom does. It goes in comes in people place. I've heard pastors say they've met people praying them out of the church. Wow. They met the group of people. They just stop, happen to stop. I'm telling you, they happen to stop by the church and they met the people praying them. Cut them out. Out of this church. Move. Out of his own church that he built from the ground. That's how serious that spirit is. The Absalom spirit always feel like it's better than the person that in the leadership. They come and they come with this way about them to come and try to bring destruction. I don't know about the other churches, but in here, you get bullets. Mm -hmm. Spiritual bullets. Amen. Let me make that clear. Spiritual. Spiritual. Okay? Or I'm going to bear you on an acre of land. <laughs> <laughs> That's our little inside joke. So, understand, when you become, you have to watch people. So, if somebody comes to you and trying to tell you to do something else outside of the vision of the church... You need to quickly come and tell your leaders, or oh, I don't like the gossip, so I just, I just, I don't say nothing. If you don't say nothing, then you're just a part of them as, as bad. You're just as bad as them. Yeah. Because if I see my child steal, and I don't go back and take them to the store and let them give that back, I am just as much as thief as they are. I'm teaching my child to be a thief, right? But if my child, I don't care how small they are. I remember somebody, I think, I don't remember one of my kids, but we were in a store, and they stole a candy. I took them back in the store, turned them up in the front of everyone, and give the man back his candy. He said, she can have it. I said, no, she cannot. Because she stole it. I bet she ain't steal no more that day. You need to, so we need to understand that. Then one of my other daughters, she used to steal ice. And my coins look like they're going down. <laughs> <laughs> this girl used to steal all my coins and have had a friend having big party, buying big time lunch. So one day, and they off this, so I was asking mommy, how do you know? I said, it, it, I don't know. All I had on this person was go look in the bag. He ain't telling me what to look in the bag. I just go, I look in the bag. Lo and behold, bag full of coins. Boy, she get it that day. I don't think she, listen. And so these are the things. We have to be careful. Because what the Absalom spirit will do, they look for people with talent. They look for people who have the gift in. And they look for people who sitting in the church. And they ain't doing nothing, you know. Like, okay, well, I see Sister Jennifer's come to church, but she really ain't in no department. Let me see if I could recruit her. Not knowing that you have to sit and wait. You have to wait to be prepared. When the leader, when God, when, let me tell you, when you have a proper leader, they know when to elevate. God will tell them when to elevate somebody. The point is we put people in position too fast. And you put them in too fast and they never last. Because they weren't <laughs> properly prepared. Are you all hearing me on today? You ever pick up mango and it ain't right? And bite and drink? You have to eat it with a little salt and pepper. But it tastes horrible, right? That's the same thing what happens when you go in ministry and you're right. You, you sound like a sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal. You're not ready. You make it a bunch of noise, but you just cling, cling, cling. And to you sound like, to you sound like, and I hang out. But to the people you sound like, cling, cling, cling. Because you're not ready. 
You have the gift and you have the power, but there's preparation time. Look at your neighbor says preparation time. time. You gotta be prepared. You gotta go through the process. Nobody will go through the process no more. Everybody just wanna be. I have a student there. He don't wanna do the work. He'll just sit there and say, so um, um I, I, can I do the thing online? No. Um, he'll write a couple notes. See, I did some work. I did some work, but he's still he looking for B, you know, looking for B or A, but don't wanna do the work. And that's where we are. We want promotion, but we don't want to go be the way. We don't want to suffer for Christ. We don't want to be persecuted. We don't want to be laughed at. We don't want to be mocked. We don't want nobody to talk about us. We just want to get it, give it to me, and give it to me easy. But when you reign with Christ, the Bible said the suffering that you see now shall not be compared to what? The glory that shall be revealed to us. So you got to wait. God prepares you on each level. He prepares you for that level or that place of where you're going. Hello? So sometimes we have to be contrary. Don't let nobody come to tell you to be contrary to the vision. Not even on your job. If the people say, you only have 15 minutes lunch, stop telling the people, but I just go 15 minutes ago and I send another out of 15 right in the bathroom. That is robbing. And that's stealing time. Right? So you're going contrary to what the people say. Okay? Half an hour lunch and half an hour you spend um, um, hiding and ducking and you know you're supposed to be doing stuff, but you're walking all about through the bathrooms, hiding, and all over the place, because you know the hospital or the school or wherever you're working big. So you can hide. But you don't understand that there's an all seeing eye watching you. Yep. Hello? It's true. People tell you don't be on the phone, child. I need that. I need to have my phone on because I don't know who my call. I have family all over the world. <laughs> Listen, God is a God of order. And if he's a God of order, he will not allow things to happen and you don't know about it. He will not allow that to happen and you sitting there doing the work of God. He's not a wicked God. He will make sure that you know and understand and he'll show it to you. Are you all letting me on today? So these are things that really, really God, look at these things that look small, but they're big to God because it's a small fox that what? Small the mind. It's a small fox that what? Small the mind. It's a small fox. Here's what, here's what, um, here's what, um, when we get contrary, let's go to that picture. This is what we do. Go to that next slide. This is what we do. This is the big meeting, and this is how the church looks. All these other little clicks. Everybody want to have power. Everybody want to um. <laughs> I remember, boy, listen, it was so funny. I remember when um, when I first started ministry, and I um, ordained everybody. Listen, and it, it was so funny. I, everybody got ordained, right? I, I ordained everybody. Everybody got ordained. When you listen, the next day, you listen to the voicemail. Hi, you've reached Deacon. Hi, you've reached Deaconess. Hi, you've reached Minister. Listen, everybody voicemail. I created a whole chaos for my own self. Oh, you have to respect me. No, you need to respect me. Man, listen, it was chaotic that I created, but I thank God for his mercy and grace. Um, I thank God that, mo that the people that who are still here. At one point, I had to take. I said, "Okay, everybody, nobody have their license. Everybody gone. That's it. I take. I take. I said, take it back. You strip. That's it. Because everyone, this one was up in meeting. That one was up in meeting. Everyone was contrary. It was just totally chaotic. Yes. Now, if I didn't have the the, the the discernment and the see God, I would have made the splits. You all understanding me? Hello? No, I'm serious. So this is what happens, and this is what Satan is doing because he don't want. Don't forget, he do not like unity. Even in your family, you will cost your children. You'll be mad with your children. This will be my all of a sudden feel like a big chaotic situation. He does not like unity. He don't like when you're together. People don't like to see when you are together and you have unity in your life. Come on. They don't like that. Girl, you always with your husband. Girl, you need some time to yourself. Um, you 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 married? <laughs> And so what if I'm with my husband? And so what if he's the center of my joy? Amen. I have God first. So what, you, you, you got some problem? Amen. People do that. So what if I'm with my wife? <laughs> so what if I want to spend time with her? So what if I want to honor her? So what? Mm -hmm. What I got to do with you? Huh, child, I don't think all the things you be doing, I think that's a bit too much for that is there. Buying them roses and thing and taking that down. I don't know. Well, I ain't got no time for that. You know, well, that's your story. This is my story. Amen, yes. People will come and split your house. They will split your house apart. They will split you and your children apart. 
Because people will come and try to tell your children things about you. You know, don't let your children be having a bad day. They will try to put um, things in your children and put things in their children. All of a sudden, you're trying to figure out why your children are acting out. Because some Absalom spirit that start to impart in that child. And tell her, especially the child mother, you, I can't stand my mommy man. I can't deal with her right now. What they will do, they'll come and sow bad seeds. That Absalom spirit look for the opportunity to sow bad seeds into the life of that child. And you try to figure out, why is this child being so defiant? Why are they acting out like this? Because an Absalom spirit probably got a hold of your child. You know, they can't rule their children, but they won't be a child to everybody else's children. Okay? I'm telling you. So we need to understand. I'm telling you, this is a serious spirit. It is nothing to play with. It destroy nations. It destroy churches. It destroy home. Understand? And it can destroy you. And you could be the carrier of it. Ooh. You can look at this and see that this sounds like me. This is a good time now to get it together. I hear me on today. Because this is the deliverance church where God lives, according to Dr. Mark. Right? He said living now, so this is the deliverance church where God lives. And so I need us to understand very seriously. You don't want nobody calling you. I'm um, talking about, I've had this situation. <clears throat> I like people to, we, we had this situation where, <laughs> I know Brother Dwayne, I, I'm trying, I'm really trying to have this ethics with the, with the live and all this other stuff. I'm trying. Okay, we have this situation where people will say, hey, um, come to dinner. You know, you don't know these people. Can you imagine now Shakira inviting, um, hey, Pickett, I want you and your family to come to dinner. I just want to get to know you guys. Why? We have meet and greet. We have Fort Sundays. Fort Sunday Fellowship. You, 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 this is what happens, you know. You end up going, and all of a sudden, it's a whole other story. Now, you come innocently. Just like I remember one of my teachers told me, she said um, she was a young babe in Christ. And she started the church on fire, and the woman tell her, so you see the pastor there and his wife? So you know the pastor was a prostitute and the husband was a pimp. <laughs> <laughs> that messed her right up. She said she had to try so hard. Every time she looked up there, she said, prostitute and pimp. She had to pray and, and, and took her soul. That's the truth. Because you know, now come on now. If someone tell you, I mean, let me show you all trying to play deep. If someone tell you that someone that someone's serving at the fourth Sunday of AIDS, you would need you go home every Sunday. Tell the truth. Yeah. Tell the truth. Yeah. Thank you. Even if they wear gloves. All you can see is AIDS. <laughs> even though you can't get to like that, you know it. Come on now. You know it. Even if they want to, you'll be like, all of a sudden, nobody to fall Sunday, a bunch of food there. Don't let them cook you and eat. And you'll be like, no, I feel like I want to eat them. I don't feel like eating no chicken right now. I go pass. I, 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 I just, yeah. Oh, we can do that. That's true, yeah. Huh? Lack of knowledge. Lack of knowledge, right? So we need to understand, we have to be very careful. Listen to me, light changes. Be very careful. God is looking for a church that is going to represent him. So when you see the devil, what you do with him? Shoot him. Shoot him. Oh, God. Somebody say nice. Yeah, I didn't say that. They see the devil. Resist him. But they didn't tell him how to resist him. So how you going to resist him? Shakira, shoot him. That's how she resist him. So he said to resist the devil and he will what? Flee. He will flee from you. So look at the gathering of others. Are you seeking support from your viewpoint? If you're gathering out of people around you who have the same concerns as you, you can know that the same thing happened in the story of Absalom. So you're gathering people around who have the same viewpoint as you. You know, um, I come to church to hear a word. I don't have a no Absalom spirit. I have a deep spirit. I need God. I, I come feeling down. You feel down? You should have, you should, you should have a worship and a prayer life with God so you can get yourself up. This ain't no tire shop, baby. Blow you up. Right. Amen. You're supposed to enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with what? Praise. Enter his gates with what? Praise. And his courts with what? Praise. So you're supposed to come ready, right? And I'm not saying that you're not going to have burdens, but come with them so you can cast them down and leave fulfilled, right? <laughs> leave knowing that you are closer to your destiny because you need to know these things. You are already blessed. I don't have to tell you bless, you're blessed. Amen. You are blessed. Look at your neighbor telling you're blessed. You are blessed. I'm telling you, y'all are blessed. So you don't need to know that. You need to know what is stopping you from getting the or getting closer to that blessing, holding it up. Amen. Amen. You're blessed already. 
Amen. Let's go down to the next one. Stealing hearts. Here's what the spirit of Absalom do. It steals hearts. This is what that meeting about. As you gather others, are you stealing hearts? Or are you affirming the pastor or the leader? They have assigned to by God. So here is it now. So we in charge of the prayer ministry. So she, I oh, think this is when you really can pray. You know, I really like when you do these prayer. You know, yeah, you know, I thank God I'm doing the prayer. You know, and that's why I tell you I'll come to the prayer. That's what I was trying to tell you what God is saying about the prayer. God even in that, and the leader will send you in in that. <laughs> and people do that. I just want to thank God for everyone coming out tonight. You understand? Thank you for so much for coming out, and we forget who we're representing. Don't forget who you represent. You're representing God. We want to give God all the glory. I want to thank God for my leaders for this opportunity, for affording me to be a part of the vision. Don't take the glory to yourself because God will share his glory with? No man. God will share his glory with? No man. He don't like when people take his glory, right? Amen. And so we need to be, so people will steal your heart. How do they steal your heart? They like to bring gifts, right? You know people like to bring gifts. They want to bring you gifts. You know, so they bring everybody gifts. You watch those people who come in there, and I say that's a bad thing. But they come and they want to bring gifts, Okay. All right, and, and gift is good because gift is one of my love language. I like gifts. But what I'm saying is, why are you giving me these gifts? Because you might be in, <laughs> you might be investing in me. You you follow what I'm saying? So I see Nyasha. Okay, Nyasha look like she little far off. Okay, I'm gonna bring her gift. I'm gonna steal her heart and tell her how nice she is and da 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 da. da. Okay, there's another one. Look far. Okay, I'm gonna get this to Vivian. I'm gonna bring this. We mean like food. All you can do is bring her food. <laughs> I'm going to bring her some food and see what's going on. I'm going to talk to her. You know what I mean? Oh, there's a nice one up in the front. That one in the front with the thick cloth around her. Oh, my God. I'm going to talk to her and see how she's doing. And, and, and then you start to see like, oh, there's Brad Isaac. He looked like he's a little upset. Hey, big guy, how you doing? How long have you been here? Wonderful. Well, you know, how, how do you like it? Ah, I mean, that difficulty is. That's all they need. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I have my challenges, but you know, I, I like it. That's all they need, that little opening. And that's how Absalom steal the hearts of people. Just like how we go and we somebody cheat on us, doesn't it hurt? Because somebody else stole that heart of that person. Mm -hmm. You all follow what I'm saying? Somebody else stole that heart of that person because sometimes we get relaxed in our relationship, even in our physical relationship. And guess what? Somebody stole the heart of that person you're trying to figure out. Because another man's garbage is another man's what? Treasure. Another man's God is another man's what? Treasure. Right. So somebody, you, you stole the heart of people. But how, if you're stealing the heart of people, why are you doing it? The, the Absalom did it because Absalom was trying to overthrow his father. Absalom was trying to be the king. What kind of thing is that? Okay? Now, a long time ago, I asked this, this Warlock guy. I said, why do people come and try to take over people's ministry? He said, because it's easier. So already, they already have an establishment. I gotta go make work. All I gotta do is come and take it over. We have to be careful. Mm -hmm. So Satan will use anyone that is open. Anyone, anyone, any one of us. He can use any one of us to come in and destroy it. I can destroy my own ministry if I allow the spirit of Absalom to come in me. Because mm -hmm. I could just say, well, child, don't worry about your life, though. Huh. You see, notice I don't say much to her. Don't worry about her. I already planned that scene. Oh, if that girl. Don't worry, you, Yolanda. Then I go to Yolanda, Yolanda. Girl, don't worry about you, man. Don't, don't, don't worry about that, girl. We, we got this. You see how I'm causing problem? Because now what I'm doing is I'm agreeing with everyone and have everybody against everybody, and everyone is divided, and in the middle I'm standing like I'm the princess or the king of him, the queen of Shinovia. Right? So we need, <laughs> we need to be careful of that and understand that these things can happen. Okay, let's move on. Disengaging. Are you running strong with the leader or are you shrinking back into a smaller group of disgruntled people? We talk about that. Watch those who are disgruntled. If they're disgruntled, why are they coming to you and telling you what they're mad about? Oh, I don't like what um, Kirano did, you know, I, I, but I don't say nothing. No, I got a problem with that because if you don't say nothing, they're not telling me that you're not a part of the vision, that you're trying to, you don't realize that that can produce a problem. Yes. You understand? Oh, I see what I see a lot of things, but I don't say nothing. Mm hmm. Why are you seeing things and you're not saying anything? Mm -hmm. Hello? So, I, and I'm not saying, oh, I don't want to be, you know, don't be like the children of children say they don't want to be a, a, a snitch. A, a snitch. Mm -hmm. They say snitches get stitches, whatever yeah. they say. <laughs> right? But the thing about it is, is that that's not the thing. That See, that's a, that's a, that, those words are straight from hell. Because that person could commit suicide because they don't want to snitch. Right. 
Wow. How do you feel about that? That someone died because just because you didn't want to tell someone that you had them making and hair and see what they were doing and you noticed that they were cutting themselves and you didn't tell them and that day they go home and kill themselves. How would you feel? Knowing that guilt on your shoulder that you could have helped to save that person's life. Right? And I'm not saying snitching. You come in and you say, hey, well, you know what? I, I'm going to have to tell my leader about this so I need to talk to you. I'm going to let the leader know because this right here, we don't do this. People will stop. But if you sit there and listen to the whole long story, and then you talk, but we just need to pray. No, I have my I have my concerns too. We need to pray. You're a part of God's Holy Spirit, right? And there's no perfect church. You will have some concerns, but what you do, you address those concerns to who? Your leader, and you address them to God. You talk to God about them, and you talk to your leader about them, right? You don't sit and go hope with others. Because let me tell you something. Those of you who are called as leaders, let me tell you, whatever you reap or whatever you sow, you reap. Whatever you sow, you go what? Reap it. So if you sow corruption, you can reap what? Corruption. Whatever you did before in your ministries, you're going to reap that. Don't the Bible say, as long as the earth remaineth, there's what? Harvest time. Seed time and what? Harvest time. Say it loud because y'all know what y'all have to say. There's what? Seed time and harvest time. As long as the earth remains, you're going to have seed time. So here's what we do. Show them the next picture. We sit. Have a conversation with your leader. Oh, I make an appointment with that now. Just sit. Go to SharonFletcherMinistries.com. That's the quickest way. Fill out that form and I'll see you. I'll see that you needed to have time to speak with me. Oh, who you know she, you know she thinks she is? Well, I think that I'm a mother, I'm a pastor, I'm a principal. I think that I'm a student and all that other good stuff. And you just said me crazy. I'm certainly not an octopus. So I need to make time to be able to have um, speak with you. If it's an urgency, if it's an emergency, that's problem. Because I've learned that sometimes I come and talk to people, uh, pick it, and let me tell you something. It was so foolish that I wanted to punch them through the wall. <laughs> okay? It, it's nothing for me to drive my gas all the way down here for to hear something that is really not that important. Okay? Or to hear that uh, on Sunday you notice that so-and-so didn't meet and greet you and you just wanted to talk to me. <laughs> it could develop into a problem, but you, you understand what I'm saying. So I want us to understand that this spirit of Absalom has destroyed, and I want you to listen to the tendency. They're gossiper. That's the first spirit that we see. They go contrary. They're gossiper. They come and sow discord. They're disgruntled. They're contrary to the vision. That means they're not a part of the vision. And because of that, what they do, gather others and try to um, try to come in and poison them. They steal the hearts of the people. So Absalom stole the hearts of the people. But in all that, what happened? He ended up killing himself, right? Because if anything is not built on the foundation of God, it will not last. Hello, somebody? Yes. A leader, a great leader. Those of you who call a leader, a great leader must be a what? Follower. A great follower. If you want to be a great leader, you have to be a what? You have to learn how to what? Follow. And you ain't the lead all the time. Sometimes you have to do what? Follow. You have to know how to what? Follow. Yeah. You have to know how to put aside what you know and follow. Great leaders, and uh, Max Lucado, Samuel Chan, all those great leaders, Dr. Miles Monroe, that's one line that they all say. In order to be a great leader, you have to be a great follower. You have to be a great follower. And if you're not a follower of Christ, you definitely need to follow the, the leaders in the church. You have to first follow God in your life. And he should be the first and foremost thing in your life first. And then you will be able to follow the your leadership. Amen? Amen. I know we're grown. I'm going to do what I say. You know, you, you can't tell me what to do. That's okay. We ain't, we're not here to tell you what to do. We're here to guide you and to help you with the word of God. Everything your leader tells you should line up with what? The word of God. Because the word of God is what is going to help us. And the word of God is what instructs us and help us and show us what we need to do to become the vessels that God has called us to. And so that's vitally important today. The spirit of Absalom, remember, it's a gossip spirit. It's contrary to the vision. It comes and brings gathering. And then what it does, it comes and, uh, and steal the heart of the people and then begin to say, hey, I can take over. And then it tries to overthrow the pastors or the leaders. I have seen that many, many times and on many occasions. And so you need to understand, sometimes that even in marriages, the Absalom spirit will come or the Jezebel spirit will come and throw over your marriage and you have somebody there and they're trying to destroy your marriage and you try to figure out what happened. You miss the whole process of what had happened. So I pray today that God would open your eyes to the spirit of Absalom. 
And I pray today that if you are the one that has been open and the spirit of Absalom has somehow became a part of your life by whatever means necessary, I pray that today that you will allow God to deliver and set you free, that you can grow in the things of God. Because when we put our mouth on others, understand, we put our mouth on others, we are setting ourselves far back. You understand? When you are putting your mouth on others, you're setting yourself far back. You have to be careful how you're speaking about God's men and women of God. Yes. That's not your problem to fix what they're going through. Your problem is to pray them through. Mm -hmm. our, our job is to pray. Your job is to pray for me as your pastor. I never tell you that I was walking on air. I never told you that I was invincible. I never told you that I believe I can fly. I'm just here by the grace of God, doing what God has called me to do, right? Yeah, yeah. And sometimes I might not do the things right, and you might see something that I don't see. It's not your job, but I can't believe she see that, with all that anointing. Oh, because not all the time you're in cloud nine. Sometimes you come down to your humanness. You're not always walking deep. <laughs> Can you imagine me at school? <laughs> You think I'm crazy, right? You come to me and the sledge, hey, mama, mama, she could have done something. I hear mm, in the spirit. Ooh, mama, mama, you gonna hey, uh, There's a child there that's bothering you. Mm, mm, mm. Come on. We're not. <laughs> that's the truth. That's the truth. I'm walking in McDonald's up and she comes. Mm, 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 mm. I perceive, oh my God, you put two pickles on that big man. Yes, God. Come on. It's not all, there you go, circle of care. So it's not all the time, listen to me. So that means, that means I have to watch the role that I'm in. We all, we gotta wear different hats, but we gotta know what we're doing in the position we're doing. I'm being very serious enough. We gotta know, let your head out a little bit, not too much, just a little bit. When you, you know, so sometimes understand we are here. The Bible say iron sharpens. Iron. Iron sharpens what? Iron. Because there be, there could be something I can learn from you guys. I love talking to the young people because I learn a lot from them. Mm -hmm. They're pure and their motives are pure. So I like to listen to what they say. I learn a lot from them. I don't have a problem learning because learning, <laughs> leaders must also not only learn how to follow, but they must be lifelong learners. learners. They must be what? Lifelong Life learners. learners. If you stop learning, you have just suffocated yourself and you've just stunted your growth. Mm -hmm. Leaders must be what? Lifelong learners. And in order to be a good leader, you have to be a good? Oh. Hallelujah. Let us stand. And that's why Jesus said, if any man be in Christ, he must first deny himself. Pick up his what? Cross. And do what? Follow him. Deny himself, do what? Follow him. Pick up his cross. And follow Christ. He must first deny himself, pick, pick up his cross, and follow, and follow Christ. Christ. Hallelujah. Glory to God.